And I was dancing in the spirit, amen, and God was just all over me, and I couldn't help it. I had to can't help it. I love it when I get to can't help it. Because I know it's all Him and not me, amen. But God laid one person on my heart to grab a hold of His hand and get Him to step out in the aisle with me and dance, and you know what? He wouldn't do it. You know what I did? I quickly let go of his hand and I kept dancing. Amen. I didn't let it affect me and stop me. Amen. If he wants to miss out on his blessing, he can. Let me tell you, if you're going to sit back on God, God ain't going to make you move. But if you'll stand still and wait on God, God will make you move. Amen. He'll get you to the point that you can't help it. Amen. And you'll have to dance. Amen. You'll have to run out. You'll have to stand up and shout. Amen. You can't help it. I promise you. He's a good God. I'm not up here just shouting, amen, to shout. I'm shouting because the Spirit of God is doing this right now. Amen, I'm just obeying Him, amen. I'm trying to encourage you, amen, to put your trust and faith in God, amen. To quit doing things on your own. Let go and let God. See, the way that we let go and let God is we wait upon the Lord. Isn't that one of the scriptures she read? This morning, Isaiah 40 and 31. Yeah. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. That's what these three verses that I just read to you, 24, 25, and 26, is telling us, amen, that we need to learn to wait on God. We need to trust Him. Lean not under our own understanding. Delay is not denial. That's what Santa preached on this morning. Amen. It don't have to be our way. It has to be His way. Amen. The Bible says it needs to be Yahweh. Amen. That's God's way. Amen. I want to encourage you. If I don't do anything in this house tonight, I want to encourage you to walk by faith. And not by sight. Amen. I had a scripture here that I wanted to read. Genesis 49 and 18. It says, I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Psalm 37 and 7 says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. Listen to this. Wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. But wait patiently. God's talking to you. I promise you, this God is not Brother Derek. I was so troubled in my spirit. Sat back there and closed the door. Didn't let anybody come in this evening because I didn't know what God wanted me to preach. All I could think was, was delay is denial. I thought, man, what am I do? Go tell Sandra she needs to preach again. Is that what I need to do, Lord? The Lord says, no, wait on me. And I said, okay, God. And then all of a sudden, I was sitting there and God started talking to me. And he started talking to me about the disciples and the ship. How they began to worry and fret because of the waves and the things that was going on around them. When the whole time Jesus was on the ship with them, the man that can speak unto the storm, he spoke, he walked up there, and he said, peace, peace to you. Amen. That's all he said, George. He was bigger than that storm, brother. He is bigger than any storm. That's right. Do you not understand? He's the way maker. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's everything you've ever needed. Why don't you trust him, amen? amen. Now, I'm not saying this. I'm going to say this because one reason, because I know that Diane had a hurt knee at one time. It was bothering her. 
Amen. But you know what? She came to church. She didn't neglect to stand up and praise God, even though her knee hurt. There was times she probably didn't feel like getting up. And somebody would say, stand on your feet. We're going to all praise the Lord. I'd see her struggle to get up. Come on. Now, I don't know if her knee hurts at all anymore or it hurts a little bit or what. But I can tell you this. She hadn't backed up. That's right. She stood firm. You know what God's going to do about it? He's going to bless you for it. He will. Won't he, Lamont? He's going to bless her for it. Now, is he going to heal her knee? If he wants to, he can. Amen. But he may be allowing that knee to hurt to keep her close to him. I don't know. I'm not God. But I do know this. <laughs> He's been giving her some awesome, awesome songs, hasn't he? Just like that one she sang tonight. Mm -hmm. My goodness gracious. How do you fold together something like that and lay it out in the format that she sang it in? It had to be God. God's blessing her. Does that mean it's been easy? No, her knees hurt. It's hurt bad at times. It's hurt so bad at times that she couldn't get up and come. But she was here the next service. <laughs> Reminds me of Cletus. My goodness gracious. A man at his age had heart surgery and the next day he's in church. Or that yeah. night. <laughs> Y'all remember? Yeah. What a soldier. What a prime example to us to love God more than you love the things of this world. Amen. Brother Cletus wasn't bound by material things. He sure wasn't. He wasn't. He didn't have much, but he loved the Lord. He just loved God. Yes, sir. Man, I'll tell you, I love to sit around and talk to him because he would give you scripture. He would talk to you about the Lord. Amen. Oh, yeah, he loved to fish. Amen. He loved to talk about a little fishing every now and then. He loved to whittle. He would hardly ever talk to you about whittling. Uh, he'd tell you some of the things he's whittled. Amen. He did me. Amen. Maybe he talked to you about them. I don't know. But I can tell you this. He talked to me more about God than he did anything else. Such an example. Brother Hines and Sister Hines. Do anything they could to help you. Yep. They didn't want nothing in return. Nothing. I mean, well, you couldn't hardly buy them nothing to eat. I know I tried. <laughs> no, we'll buy you something, brother. <laughs> Why? Because they knew God. God had blessed them to be a blessing. God's blessed you to be here. He's blessed me to be here. And I don't know about you, but if I do anything else upon this earth, I want to please him. Yep. I want him to be happy with me. I want, when they come to my, my uh, casket and look down in there, I want them to look down in there and say, I'll tell you one thing, that boy, he loved God. Amen. That's the testimony I want. I know one place he, he's, he's with the Lord. Yeah. Because he loved the Lord. You know what? That'll not happen if I walk by sight. It won't. So I true. promise it won't. If you're walking by sight, you know what you're doing? You're veering off the path of God right now in your life. Yep. The devil will lead you astray. If you're walking by faith, you're putting all your trust in the Lord. What do you mean, Brother Derek? Putting all my trust in the Lord. Sister LeBron, how would you identify or define putting all your trust in the Lord? If I ask you to give me a definition for that, can you give me a definition? Huh? Come on now. Put your all in all. To trust him and uh, he's been my everything. I know he has. You know, I can tell you, uh, Sister LeVon fights a lot of battles. But she's not a quitter. 
If you're going to throw in the towel, you'll never make it. Come on. But if you'll just learn to stand, to stand and stand still, that's what the Bible says. It says if we'll just learn to stand, then we'll see the salvation of God. God will deliver and set free anything that the enemy's trying to do to you. God will overcome what the adversary is trying to do. If you'll just stand by faith, not walk by sight, but walk by faith. Amen. I hope that you've got something tonight. I'm going to try to close out. I've got one more scripture I was wanting to read. I'm going to read it to you. And close this by the way, man. I want you to know, and God wants you to know, amen, that we have to be patient. Amen? Yep. Go back to Jesus real quickly. They found Jesus in, in the Father's house. Amen? And if I can remember correctly, he said, you should have known. I'm just putting yeah. that right there. Right? That's, that's what? You should have known where I was at. Yeah. That's what he said to his mom and his dad. Did you not know I'm about my father's business? Yeah. And that means you should have known. Should have known. Where are you at tonight, amen? Are you walking by faith? We can't just come to church because we know it's the right thing to do. That's a good reason to be here. But it shouldn't be the reason you're here. The reason that you're here is because you know that God will take care of you. And you love him with all your heart. And you just want to fellowship with your brothers and sisters. And you want to magnify God. Amen. And you want to hear the word. Amen. You come to church because you love God. And he's what matters to you. Amen. Let me read this last verse. I'm close. Amen. This is found in Psalm 40 and 1. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me. And I heard my cry. Did you hear that? Let me read it again. Psalm 40 and 1. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me. And I heard my cry. Oh, I said, I put one word in there. Let me back up. And heard my cry. Come on. He heard my cry. I knew I was saying something wrong. Didn't sound right. Amen. He heard. We just learn to wait on God. Amen. Don't get ahead of him. Surely don't fall away from him. But stand still and hear the cry of God. God will hear your cry. I'm sorry. Still want to say it backwards. He'll hear your cry. Adversary is trying to whoop me down, up and down, but close Come on. right now. Amen. I can feel the adversary. I can feel him. You know what? But there's one thing I'm not going to fear him. Amen. I believe that God had an on time message tonight, this morning. And I believe that someone in here tonight has been walking by fear. They've not moved. They've sat in their seat when God spoke to them. Now, if you, you're that person, you can help me a whole lot by standing to your feet and running to this altar. Because what you need to do is repent. So those strongholds that the devil's got on you. Stand, Brother Derek, am I possessed? Nobody said you was possessed. Bible says God's the only one that tears down strongholds. But you know what? God won't tear the strongholds down if you don't release him to do it. How do I do that? By running and kneeling down in his feet. Saying, look, God, I know there's been many a times. See, I can tell you I've done it. There's been many a times God spoke to me to do something, and I didn't do it because 
I was more concerned about what everybody else was doing or what somebody might think than I was what God wanted. Now, if I can admit it, why can't you? I'm trying to make it easy on you to get up out of your seat. Don't do it because of me, but do it because it's the truth. Come on. Amen? Because God wants to set you free. He does. So, does that mean I'm not saved? No, that don't mean you're not saved. That just means that the enemy at times, Brother Ken, the enemy will take and he'll take us and he'll get a stronghold on us. And he'll work us like a little puppet. <laughs> My goodness. Well, he likes using deacons and everything else to do this because that man's been in this church for 50 years. <laughs> yep. And he won't get up and do that. If God had anything in to doing that, then why ain't he done that? Huh? Come on. Now I'm making light of it, trying to entertain you just a moment, amen, to get you focused on what God's talking about right now. Call it commercial. Amen. Y'all like watching TV, don't you? That's what commercials do. It keeps you interested. Amen. Sandra hates commercials. Interrupt her movie. But what a commercial does, it, it revives you. Gets you to thinking about what was happening. So when it comes back on, you're interested in it. Keeps you from going to sleep. I'm not trying to lose you. Amen. Promise you I'm not. I'm trying to tell you something. If you sit there on God, then you don't blame anyone else because you can't get up and dance. Don't you worry about God asking you to get up and dance because eventually he'll quit asking you. I promise you. When God quits dealing with you about something, how in the world are you going to serve him? Let me encourage you. How many wants to be honest tonight? Every head bowed. Let's just do it this way. Every head bowed. Nobody looking around. Bow your head back here. Don't look around. Close your eyes. You too, eh? All right. You be honest tonight when I ask this question. How many of you know that God's asked you to do something and you didn't do it? Raise your hand. I'm not talking about just tonight. I'm talking about any time in general. Has God ever asked you to do anything and you just didn't do it? Well, I thank God there's some honest folks in here. Amen. I'll be praying for the rest of you. Amen. Because I'll guarantee you every one of us in here would have to raise their hand and say, I'm guilty, Brother Derek. All I'm trying to do is help you to get free tonight. Yes. Amen. Come on. I'm closing. I'm telling you. Praise God. I wish you out. I thought he'd never shut up. Come on, brother. <laughs> uh, that you taking that, George? No, it ain't. I, <laughs> I still got my camera rolling, brother. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I've got to, uh, Make it easy on you. If you know that God's wanted you to get up and dance and you Amen. Didn't get up and dance, I want you to be man or woman enough to run down here this altar. I'm not saying tonight. I'm saying any time since you've been at this church. Amen. Let's just put it that way. If there's anybody here that God has laid on their heart to get out in the aisle and dance, just felt like cutting a jig, amen, and just wouldn't do it. I want you to get up from where you're at and walk, walk up front. Amen. Because I'm going to pray that God tears those strongholds off of you. Come on. That you're free. Amen. If there's anybody here that God's laid on their heart to run, and you hadn't run, you chose not to. Come on up here. There's one. She's got an excuse. She can't even see. But you know what? She admits it. She said, well, yeah, I have to admit it. There was a year there, Randy. It was close to a year. It may not have been a year to the day, but it was close to a year. God kept dealing with me and dealing with me and dealing with me, and I was the pastor. 
want me to run. I went right. Now I'm going to ask you this. God knows what he's doing. I'm going to ask this question because he told me to ask you. How many of you in here can say, Brother Derek, I've never heard God ask me to do anything. Is there anybody in here that would say, Brother Derek, I've never heard God ask me to get up and do anything. Anybody in here like that? There's one. Come on, Gail. Amen. This is what, how you get free. This is how you learn to walk by faith and not by sight. This is what Jesus was doing when he was in the church house talking to the priest. He was learning how to grow in the fear and admiration of the Lord. He was being about the Father's business. Don't just come to church just to come to church. Come to church to be the church. To be who God's called you to be. Amen? Senator, I want you praying for these women. Amen? LaVon, come up here and help her pray. Amen? Now, if you want to get up and come help them, pray with them, just because I didn't call your name, don't just sit there. Because if God laid that on your heart to do that, then that's the same thing as God talking to you. So I hope you understand when I asked you if God has asked you or dealt with you to get up and run or to do something, See, he's asked us all to do things. He's never left not a one of us out. But he knows the ability that he's given you. And he wants you to work that ability by faith. Amen. Some of you in here are prayer warriors. You're interceders, amen. You're the ones that God wakes up in the middle of the night and lays someone like me or, or Sandra or Brother Ken or, or, or Sue or George or Randy on your heart. And all he wants you to do is to work that gift. All he wants you to do is to step up by faith. Say, yeah, I gotta lean over, I gotta pray for Randy. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. But I know Randy's dealing with something and he don't know how to deal with it. And God, I ask you right now, God, to help Randy. Help him to be that overcomer that you called him to be, God. God, help him to stand up, God, and de declare the works of the Lord in his life, God. Help him to stand up and be the child of God that you called him to be, God. I pray right now, God, that you'll strengthen him, God. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. If we don't want to be used by God, you know what? God ain't going to make you. Not going to make you walk by faith. But the closer you get to Him, the more you'll want to spend time with Him. The more you'll want to become like Him. I promise you. See, I want to learn. I want to have so close of a walk, Randy, that when I walk by Brother Ken, I think Brother Ken needs to know this, but that Brother Ken feels the Holy Ghost when I go by him. That when I come by Sue and she's got a headache, that that headache will go away, amen. I don't even have to touch her or lay hands on her. I want that kind of walk. But that takes great dedication, amen. God's capable. He did it with Peter, didn't he? He can do it with me. He can do that with you. We're talking about great faith. The Bible says that we're to have faith as a grain of a mustard seed. So, well, that's not much faith. Wait a minute. That seed 
It's smaller than a BB. <laughs> but you know what? It produces a great big tree that the fowls of the air launch in and rest. That's great faith, ain't it? God can take little and make much with it if we'll trust Him. If we'll just trust Him and walk by faith and not by sight. I'm telling you, sister, so God's doing something in your family right now. The storm is raging, yes. Things are happening, amen. But I'll tell you, it's awakening that's taking place there. And it's our job to encourage them to take the right steps. Amen? To let them know that we're there to help them. We'll do what we can for them. No, we can't provide for their living and, and, and pay all their bills. Amen? But we can help. You can help by giving a shirt away. By giving a pair of pants. Some underwear, socks. I promise you, they'll appreciate it. Come on, loaf of bread, whatever. It don't matter. That's right. Just reach out with love and see what God will do. That's right. I promise you, love covers a multitude of sin. I'm telling you right now, we'll just love one another, put our trust and faith in God, Amen. I tell you, these strongholds, these women, they're going to get up and they're going to do things that they normally wouldn't have done because they're going to be free. Amen. They're no longer going to be bound by the strongholds of the enemy. Amen. I've been there, Randy, when I was in church day in and day out, but I was bound by the enemy because of strongholds in my life. Amen. Not what drugs and alcohol and things like that. God had delivered me from that. It was just some stinking thinking. Not trusting him like I should. Not believing like I should. The Bible says all things are possible to them that believe. I've done all I know to do tonight. But I can tell you right now, there's some of you, amen, that you need to be set free because God, there's so much potential in you that God's wanting to use you, amen, but you're so afraid of what everybody else thinks. Or that maybe you're just not educated enough. Come on now. I know people that couldn't even read the Bible, Brother Ken. I met this one lady, amen, when I first got born again. Her name was Miss Ferguson. Oh, glory to God. Miss Ferguson. Man, I think of her. She had sugar diabetes, done lost one foot, amen. And, and, and I mean, there was, a, there was a lot of stuff. God just built my faith with that woman, amen. Come on. In my life, amen. But she was a, 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 a widow, amen, of an ex-preacher. He had done passed away. But she knew the word. You know why? Because God used her to read the Bible to him. Amen. And he preached off of what she read to him. Amen. I'm telling you. And, and when I was young in the Lord, amen, I'll just tell you a little testimony that took place. This happened, amen. I met this woman. I was doing some work on her house, amen. I met this woman, and man, I could tell she loved God. I mean, as I talked to her, I felt the Spirit of God coming off of her, amen. I could feel His glory and His presence there, and I said, you love God, don't you? She said, yes, son, I love the Lord. God's been good to me. She's sitting there in a wheelchair with one of her foot done been amputated, amen. I'm telling you, but she loved God, amen. amen. Had every reason to complain about things, but she didn't complain. We got to talking and then she shared with me how her husband was a preacher and she read the Bible to him. And, and that's why she was so knowledgeable of the Word. Amen. And she just loved the Word of God. She couldn't go a day without reading the Word. She had to eat of the Word of God. Come on. 
I went over there to pray with her. Finally, after missing a, a chance to call and check on her, go ahead. Missing a call and check on her, amen, the night before, amen, crying and weeping because I knew I'd missed God. I knew it. I could feel it in my spirit. I just knew it. And Kenny told me, my, my sister's husband told me, said, don't worry about it, Brother Derek. If, if God wants you to pray with her or, or to do something, he'll give you an opportunity to do it. And I was so down on myself because I knew God had quickened in my spirit that I should have done call her. Got home that day. This was before Kenny said weeks then. And I had five messages on my voicemail. And I hit the button, nobody say nothing. I'd hit the button, nobody say nothing. Hit the button, nobody say nothing. And I couldn't get her off my mind for nothing. You know what God was trying to tell me to do to call? He didn't say call Miss Ferguson, but she was on my mind. I was pushing the button. Nobody had say nothing, Gail. You know what? And I didn't even realize that I was so young in the Lord, I didn't even realize what was going on. And I was sitting there and we was having Bible study at my sister's house that night, amen. And all of a sudden, about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, I'm, I'm sitting there and it hit me. Oh, God, you was wanting me to call and check on. That was who that was that was on my voice. Man, I wouldn't say nothing. I mean, he put it right in my spirit, dropped it right there, and I felt about that tall. I, I started crying. Kenny sitting there looking at me and said, What's wrong, Brother Dick? I said, Brother, I missed it. I missed God, Brother. I missed him. He was dealing with me today. Miss Ferguson needed me, to, and I didn't call and check on God will make a way. He'll, if he wants you to play with her or something or talk to her, he'll make a way. He said, you don't call her now. I said, no, it's too late to call her. You know what she was doing? Sitting up hurting. Didn't go to sleep at all that night. Her medicine wasn't doing nothing for her. All she wanted was me to come and pray with her. Now, it's not about me, but she knew that I love God. Amen. And so she might have called 10, 15, 20, 100 other people. But she called me. I don't know how many people she called. She was a woman of faith. Amen. But I can tell you, amen, I knew. I knew that God was dealing with me to pray for her, to talk to her, to find out what was up. Amen. The next morning, I get up, amen. I tell my little brother, I said, Darren, I said, you know, last night I was at Denise and Kenny's and we was having Bible study. And when I got home yesterday, my phone had five missed calls on it on voicemail. And I checked my voicemail. Nobody had said nothing. The whole time I was standing there looking at my voicemail box and trying to listen for somebody to say something, all I could think about was Miss Ferguson. And Darren immediately said, God wanted you to go check on her. He didn't even have the rest of the story, but he knew. Come on. He said, he said, well, what'd you do about it? I said, I, I didn't realize it, Darren, I missed God. Darren said, we'll go see her right now. <laughs> oh, he made it easy. You know what we did? We went to our house. God is always right on time. The whole time, I was so troubled and dismayed over the fact that I didn't check on her when she was calling me, amen. I didn't recognize it and understand that the Spirit of God was dealing with me, amen. But I can tell you, amen, God was setting me up Come on. for an encounter. He's our faith builder. Come on. He knew the storm was coming. He was down in the boat. I'm back to preaching again. Amen. I can't help it. Somebody needs to get a hold of this. Amen. You need to realize, amen, God knows what's good and what time and when to show up. Amen. Oh, if you could only hear what I'm hearing right now. So I'm going to Go ahead. Cool. Oh, God is showing me a fight. 
And I know that God would be a surprise for this part, so it is cold. I believe God wants you, a surprise for you. I don't know if you're going through something or you think you're going through something. I don't know, but God, when I was about praying with Sister Diane, I could see you. And God shows me that. He does. He works with me like that. And I think we need to pray for you if you're willing for us to pray for you because I don't know, but God knows what's ahead of you or whatever. Let, let us pray for you. I don't know what you're fixing to go through with or what you're going through with. Amen. But only God knows. And I just want to be obedient because, you know, if, you're, if I'm not obedient to God, then I'm going to pray for it when I get home. You know?
There I was. Me and Darren run off. Instead of going to lunch, we went to Miss Ferguson's. We headed to her house, got to her house, and I walked in, and when I walked in, Miss Ferguson couldn't come to the door. She was in a wheelchair. She could, but she didn't. She'd just say, come on in. So we walked on in, me and my little brother. And her mouth did this. <gasps> Oh, brother, I'm so glad you come. I tried calling you four or five times yesterday. All I could get was your voicemail. Man, you're talking about Florida me. I thought, oh, God, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, you know. But it was a faith builder. I needed to hear that. I needed to know that I was right, amen, that God had showed me that it was her, amen. But I'll tell you, amen, it just boosted me. I mean, I felt like an atomic bomb, amen. I could run through the wall right then. Not that I'm anything, but he is. She said, I'm so glad you come. I, my foot's been hurt. I couldn't sleep all night last night. My medicine wasn't doing a thing for me. I'm still hurting. Will you come over here and pray with me? About that time somebody else knocked on the door. And then Darren turned around. She said, come on in. And it was her maid. <laughs> her maid loved the Lord. That's all she affiliated herself with was people that love God. Not that she didn't pray for those that was lost, because she did. If she'd come in contact with them, she'd witness to them, she'd do what she was supposed to. But her maid loved the Lord. Listen to this, Brother Ken. She comes walking in, and she said, Oh, Praise God, they're fixing to pray with me. You want to come over here and let's pray they're all together for me because I've been hurting all night. She said, well, sure. She just set herself stuff down. She walked over there. We all gathered hand and we began to pray for her. I remember Miss Ferguson sitting in that chair and jerking like this. Yeah. All of a sudden, she started jerking as we was praying, amen. I felt the Holy Ghost come down, amen. I couldn't tell you what Darren prayed. I couldn't tell you what I prayed. I couldn't tell you what the lady prayed, amen. But all I knew, I was praying for her healing, amen. And that's all I prayed about, amen. I don't know what words come out of my mouth. All I knew is the Holy Ghost was there, amen. And I know that God was doing something to her, amen. We got through praying with her, and she said, oh, I feel so much better. All that pain's gone. Glory to God. I feel so good and, and she turned and asked her mate says, she said who is this guy is this is this brother Derek the one you've been talking about she said yeah this is this is the young preacher I was telling I didn't even know I was called to preach but that's what she said this is the preacher boy I've been talking about I said I'm not a preacher she said I got some literature for you I put it in my car today just to bring it to give it to you how in the world did she know I was going to be there that day I believe she had a relationship with God she just wanted to make sure it was either me or Darren she didn't know which one it was she went out there and got it she come in with a lot of what's his name Sanders somebody help me what's his first name David Wilkerson literature you know what David Wilkerson was? Was a drug addict like me. Strung out on drug and alcohol. Just all the things I used to do. She had prepared probably 15 or 20 pamphlets in a yellow envelope that was David Wilkerson literature. God told me to give these to you. I've been saving them for a couple of weeks now. Gathering this stuff up to bring to you. I said, well, you don't even know who I am. How did you know to do this? She said, God told me to put them in the car today and bring them with me. I said, glory to God. I said, I didn't even know who David Wilkerson was. I didn't. But I'm telling you these things to try to get you to move, amen? Quit sitting back on God. Let God use you. It's just like tonight. Well, I couldn't help it. I can't help it. We gotta pray for hope. That's fine. I felt the Spirit of God up here when we was praying for hope. I know that God said some things to her. Amen. I know what it was about because God showed me. 
And for you that stand in here, you witness a miracle to me. Amen? I'm just testifying to you about the things that God has done in my life. I can tell you story after story after story, Randy, of how God has moved the mountain. God's made a way. God showed me things. Not that I'm anything because if He'll do it with me, He'll do it with you. He wants to. I believe that. He wants to. I believe God's talking to you. But you know what? God ain't going to make you. I'm trying to close this thing out. All he said to the disciples that was in the ship was, Oh, yeah, little baby. God's your faith builder. Yep. If you'll just start looking unto God, God will prove himself to you. Amen. He'll build your faith. He's built mine. Amen. I was one of those that the little kids run up and tell me Bible stories. And I'm like this. I'm serious. I'm standing there ear to eyeball. Now whatever. Eyeball to eyeball. I mean ear to ear. Man, I'm wanting to hear it. I didn't know if it was telling me the truth or not. But I sure wanted to hear about God. Are you hungering and thirsting for more of Him? If he tells you to run, will you run? Tells you to stand up and testify. It don't matter if anybody's testifying.